All right, so in this video, we are gonna briefly go over the types of decay. So this is just kind of supplemental video to kind of help you with your notes and to see if you need to hear it one more time um, or if you need a couple of visuals. I um, added a couple of visuals in here instead of me trying to draw it this time. So we're just gonna start with alpha decay. Okay, so alpha decay happens when we have a very large unstable nucleus. Okay, so it is too big or too positive. Okay, so that means too positive isn't always a good thing. So what it's going to emit is it's going to emit this alpha particle right here. Okay, so this alpha particle can be, you can write it as a 4,2 helium or you can write it as a 4,2 alpha symbol. Doesn't matter which one you want to do, but just knowing that anything with atomic number of two would be in helium anyway. So it throws off this helium particle to actually stabilize itself. Okay, so that's actually a pretty big particle to emit, but alpha, part, alpha decay is actually the weakest, the weakest of decays. And what we mean by that, it has the lowest energy. Okay, so not a whole lot of energy to it. So you can have off particle being emitted. So it's cruising along and then a sheet of paper would be able to stop it. Okay, so this would just be a sheet of paper. So not very strong. Okay, so if you're gonna get hit by some type of decay, I would choose to do an alpha particle. Okay, if you could. Okay, so now that it is emitted that alpha particle, it's emitted that helium, Okay, the atom itself has now changed. Okay, so if you got rid of something with a mass number of four, your atomic mass number decreases by four. So since you got rid of helium, which has atomic, a mass number of four, it makes sense that your atom would lose four when it comes to its atomic mass. Okay. And then we got rid of the helium, which has an atomic number of two. So I got rid of two protons. So my atomic number also decreases, but it decreases by two. Okay, so our atom has now changed. It has lost four in its mass number and it has lost two in its atomic number. So it has changed. Okay, so let's look at an example. So I have an example of 210... 84 polonium. Okay, so polonium's not feeling too hot right now. It's too big, too positive. Okay, so it's going to decay. It's going to change. Now this arrow right here, I'm going to change my colors real quick. This arrow right here, all, all that arrow means is a reaction. Okay, so polonium's not feeling too hot, so a reaction is going to occur, and then it's going to change. It's going to emit an alpha particle and then change itself to a different atom. Okay, Another thing to look for is actually this number right here, 84. Okay, so any number, so atomic number greater than 83 will always be alpha decay. Okay, so if your atomic number is greater than 83, it's going to be alpha decay. So if it comes to a time where you have to predict what type of decay would happen, you could simply look at my atomic number and anything above 83 would automatically be alpha decay. So that rules out my other types of decay. So that's a number to kind of watch out for if you're having to predict um, alpha decay. So again, that reemphasizes that we're dealing with very large nucleuses or large, new, large atoms. Okay, so now let's go back to our equation. So remember on alpha, we're gonna dump off a 4,2 helium. Okay, so now we gotta see what's gonna be our new atom, okay? So the way I do this, sometimes I create a visual for students who need it, is I will draw a line through this arrow, okay? Just to separate my left side from my right side, okay? So the, why, the reason why I do that is the numbers on the left side have to equal the numbers on the right side. So we're not creating or destroying and stuff. We're just shifting up numbers, okay? So I'm not going to have 84 on the right side and then have 85 on the other side, okay? So I have to have the same numbers on both sides. So 
go back to my color, I need to know what plus two on my right side equals 84 on my left side. So I would know that 82 plus two gives me 84. Okay, so now I have 84 on the left, 84 on the right. So I'm good with my atomic number. Now I need to know what plus four gives me 210. So that would be 206. So I have 210 on my right, 210 on my left. And so now I am good. So now I'd simply look up 82 on the periodic table and that would be lead. So this would be PB. Okay, so just make sure your numbers are the same on both sides. Otherwise you messed up. Okay, so let's move on to beta decay. Okay, so this is beta decay. Can't write right now, so beta decay. Let me just erase that because that was just trash. So beta decay. So beta decay, as you notice, is we're going to emit this beta particle. So it's a zero negative one B, or you could write it as a zero negative one E. Okay, so it's basically a negatively charged electron that's being emitted. Okay, so beta K is actually a medium energy. Okay, and so the reason it has medium energy is because you have a very high speed electron leaving. Okay, so it's got a little heat behind it. Okay, it can be stopped by an aluminum, so a sheet of aluminum. So we've got our electron moving along here. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to draw a little, I'm going to try to, a little aluminum can just for visual. Okay, so this would be aluminum. Okay, so that was just to be a visual. So only time you really deal with a lot of aluminum is cans that you usually drink things from. Okay, so it can stop by aluminum. So it will make it right through paper, but it will be stopped by a thin sheet of aluminum. So now let me go back and change my color. So beta decay happens when there are too many neutrons. Okay, so too many neutrons. Okay, so what's gonna happen is a neutron will change into a proton. Okay, so it's gonna help itself out, but it's going to lose an electron. So neutron is going to change to a proton. And then we lose that electron. Okay, so we're going to look at our actual beta particle next. So we have zero, negative one, E. You could do the beta symbol if you wanted to. So now let's look at our numbers. So this zero right here, okay, means my mass number does not change. Okay, because when you look at an electron compared to a neutron and a proton, its mass is very minuscule. Okay, it has a mass, but it's just nothing compared to a neutron and proton. So if we just get rid of an electron, it's not going to really change my mass. And then my number down here, so even though it has a minus one, our atomic number goes up by one. So atomic number will go up by one because a neutron changed to a proton. And so if we, if a neutron changed to a proton, then all of a sudden my atomic number has to go up. Okay. So let's look at this. Let's look at an example real quick. I have a 14, six carbon. Okay. So not very stable right now. So it's got too many neutrons. So a reaction is going to occur. So remember that arrow just means reaction. Okay. So we are going to emit a beta particle. So zero negative one E. Okay. So we're going to emit that electron. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and draw the line again, just so you can have a visual. So now I need to know on my right side, what minus one gives me six. Okay. So remember we're trying to equal out a right side and a left side or what plus a negative one gives me six. So that would actually be seven. So seven is going to go on bottom. And if you see a zero on top, that means my mass number didn't change. So if I have a 14 on the left, I know 14 plus zero gives me 14. So 14 is going to stay on top. So now I'm going to look up number seven on the periodic table 
and now this has become a nitrogen. Okay, so remember, so beta decay happens when there are too many neutrons. Okay, so we call this neutron rich. So too many neutrons. So a neutron will change to a proton and it's going to emit an electron. And if we're changing protons, you change the element itself. Okay, so this was beta decay. Now let's go on to electron capture. So the reason I would chose electron capture next is because it almost looks like beta decay. Okay, because we're still dealing with this beta particle. Okay, so what's happening is in electron capture, okay, there's not enough neutrons. Okay, so not enough neutrons. Okay, so what it's going to do is you have your nucleus here. So this is a very rudimentary drawing. And you have your electron cloud. Okay, and you've got electrons out here. So too many neutrons. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to pull in an electron to change the proton to a neutron. I'm sorry, not enough neutrons. So it's going to pull in an electron. So let me draw a little arrow. So it's going to pull an electron to the nucleus to help turn one of the protons into a neutron. Okay, so the way I try to remember this is, if you look, here is the arrow. Let me change up my colors again. So here's my arrow. Okay, so that's the reaction. Electron capture is the only one that's going to happen before the reaction occurs. So it's exactly what it sounds like. Elec it's going to capture an electron and then change. So that means this original right here, so this original atom is not stable, doesn't have enough neutrons, so it needs to change a proton to a neutron. And you have this electron here just kind of chilling on the outside. And so what it's going to do is it's going to pull it in and then it changes. Okay, so then it changes into this. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual particle itself. So again, I'll just keep in this color. So again, we're dealing with a zero negative one E. Okay, you could do the B if you wanted to. So pay attention, our mass number does not change. Okay, and our atomic number decreases by one. So beta it increased, electron capture it decreases by one. So the reason for that is because you are picking it up beforehand and then you are changing into something else. So you are losing that proton, okay? Because that neutron is, I'm sorry, that proton is turning into a neutron to help it out. So you're losing that proton. So let's look at an example. So for electron, I have 81, 37 rubidium. Okay, so it's not very stable right now. There's not enough neutrons and you have this electron that is going to pull in to help change that proton. Okay, so it's going to capture it and then we are going to change. Okay, so now I'm just going to do my line, do my line again. I'm going to keep it the same. So now I need to know what number is going to be on the right. Okay, so 37 minus 1 is going to give me 36. Okay, mass number doesn't change because 81 plus 0 is just going to be 81. So you're going to look up 36 on the periodic table, and this is now krypton. Okay, so a good indicator for this is just kind of look out for this number right here. Electron capture will typically happen with atomic numbers greater than 25. Okay, so this is if there's not enough neutrons and the atomic number is greater than 25. Okay, so remember at 83 and up, it will turn into alpha decay. So 25 and up, and there's not enough neutrons, that would be electron capture. So just pay attention because beta 
decay. The electron is after the arrow. Electron capture, it happens before the arrow. Okay, so they almost look the same, but they're in different spots. Okay, so let's move on to positron emission. Okay, so positron emission is a positron is like an electron, but it has a positive charge. Okay, so we're going to be emitting in a positive charge. Okay, so this proton changes into a neutron, and this excess positive charge is emitted. Okay, so there are not enough neutrons, so a proton will actually become a neutron. Okay, so almost kind of like electron capture, but we didn't capture an electron this time. We just had a proton change to a neutron and emit that positive charge. Okay, so this happens. Let me change my color real quick. So not enough neutrons. Okay, so a proton will change into a neutron and it will emit a positive charge. Okay, so let's look at our actual particle itself. So we have the zero plus one E. Okay, so this zero right here tells me that my mass number does not change. Okay, so mass number does not change. And if we look right here, okay, so we have an actual number there. So our atomic number is going to decrease by one. Okay, so the reason why it's decreasing by one is because we're getting a proton is changing to a neutron. Okay, so we're losing that proton. So therefore, we are losing one of our atomic numbers. Okay, so let's look at an actual example. So I have 38, 19 potassium. Okay, so I'm going to draw my arrow because the reaction is, reaction is occurring because this potassium is not stable, so it's going to fix itself. So what it's going to get rid of is a 0 plus 1 charge. Okay, I'm going to draw my line again. Okay, so now I need to know what's going to go next. So I need to see what plus 1 gives me 19 on the bottom. So I know 18 plus 1 gives me 19. My mass number does not change, so I'm going to keep 38 on top because 38 plus 0 gives me 38. And now you would look up 18 on the periodic table, and that would be argon. So it changes to argon. So one thing to watch for here is this typically happens when the atomic number is less than 25. Okay, so we had electron capture, which was atomic number greater than 25, and there wasn't enough neutrons. And we have positron emission, where there's still not enough neutrons, but this typically happens with atomic number less than 25. Okay, so positron emission almost looks like beta and electron capture, except you're dealing with this positive charge. Okay, so it sounds exactly how it's spelled out, positron, positive. Okay, so you're emitting that positive particle. Last one is, this is simply gamma decay. Okay, I'm actually going to do this one in green because the Hulk was altered by gamma radiation. Okay, so this one is the most powerful. Okay, you will not turn into the Hulk, as cool as that would be. You will have a very bad day. Okay, so most powerful, meaning most energy. Okay, this, you have, a, you have the gamma particle going along. This is actually going to take, let me see if I can change up my size real quick, a very thick piece of lead to actually stop that. Okay, so it would go right through paper, go right through aluminum. You, very, you need very thick lead to actually be able to stop gamma decay. Okay, so this happens, this typically happens, oops, size was too big. Okay, so let's go back. 
fix that. So this typically happens. with other decay. Okay, so when you push decay to a certain point and stuff, gamma radiation can actually occur. Okay, so the gamma particle, if you actually look at it here, there's not really, so your mass doesn't change. So no change. And your atomic number does not change. So atomic number, no change. So basically you're releasing energy. Okay, so I'm gonna write it again down here. So mass does not change. And atomic number does not change. Okay, so we're releasing this large amount of energy. Okay, so let's do an actual just kind of example. So again, we're not gonna go very in depth on gamma decay. It's We care mostly about the other four, um, but this is still a type and we're just gonna cover this. So an example is 60, 27 cobalt. Okay, so we're gonna release is, we're gonna release this energy. Okay, there's just too much energy going on in the atom. So we're gonna release the, the actual gamma particle. Okay, so it's characterized by a Y and there's no mass or atomic number change. So this one should be simple. So what plus zero gives me 27? So 27 would be on top. What plus zero gives me 60? 60. And then we'd still be dealing with cobalt. So still gonna be cobalt, but you're just releasing that energy to stabilize itself. Okay, so again, that was gamma decay, and this has covered all the types of decay.